Hello and welcome to the preview show from Rams TV. Derby County are on the road again this afternoon. They're heading to Oxford United's Kazam Stadium, looking to end the run of three consecutive defeats away from home. Later in the programme, you'll hear from boss Paul Warren. But first, something to celebrate. David McGoldrick was named League One Player of the Month for February on Friday. This was his reaction. I wouldn't say surprise. I thought I'd be in with a shout. Um, but yeah, it's good to get it. I remember I got the League One player of the month, I think it was like must be 13 years ago when I was at Coventry on loan, so yeah, time flies, uh, so it's good to get it. Six goals, four assists in six games, a hat-trick against Morecambe, scored in wins over Charlton and, and Cheltenham as well. How long does it take when you're on a run like that for you to feel like, okay, I'm in form here and I'm, I'm on a good run? Um, I felt like it a lot, probably, probably from the Bristol Rovers game. Um, really confident in front of goal, um, just smelling out chances and when I get a chance um, I feel like I've been putting, most, hit the target mostly and a lot of them going in so when you're in that vein of form you know you're just confident and you, um, anytime you get through or get a sniff of goal you know I feel like I'm going to score. I wanted to ask um, specifically about hat-tricks, um, the one against Morecambe was your third of the season, only four of the Derby players since the war have done that. Mm. Do you ever stop to think about how notable that achievement is? Probably not at the minute. Um, quite a few people have mentioned it to me. Um, I don't think if really like sunk in and really took it in. I think when I finish football and I look back on it, then I will really uh, treasure it. I do treasure it now, obviously, but you know, you're in the game at the minute and you're in the moment. So I want another hat trick, so uh, that's my uh, plan. But yeah, it is a great achievement, and obviously never scoring a hat trick before, and then getting three this season is uh, pretty crazy. So you know, hopefully there's a there's a fourth one coming. Fingers crossed. Um, not that anyone was writing you off, but I think people have made me surprised that at 35 you're having arguably your best ever goal scoring season. Is it nice to maybe prove people wrong a little bit and remind people of what you're capable of? Um, to an extent, yeah, you know, I, I think I've always believed in my own ability and when I came here, I wasn't coming here just to, to see out my career that maybe people thought I was, but, you know, I wanted to come and I wanted to do something. Um, and, you know, I, I was injured at the back end of last season at Sheffield United. Um, so I had that umph to, and obviously got released as well. So I wanted to, to show that, you know, I still got it, it's still capable and, you know, things have been going well this season. Um. A lot of it's down to hard work um, in the gym, in the mornings and the afternoons after training. So it's not a coincidence. Um, you know, I base myself on hard work and a lot of the lads do. So I think that's why there's been a lot of success. I'm sure there will be plenty more awards between now and, and the end of the season. So congratulations again. Um, more generally, it's not long ago that, that Derby were the form team in the division. The record has got a little bit patchier over the last few weeks. Can, can you sort of put your finger on what's changed maybe? No, not a lot. A lot's changed in terms of preparation, training, and everything's been the same. Um, it just it happens in season. You know, we was on such a good run, you know, and beating how many and winning games. You know, that wasn't going to last for the end of the season. You know, we we're going to have a little sticky spell, and we're in that these past couple of games. But we've got the players and you know the staff to 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 get us out. We're not even thinking it's a, a dilemma or whatever the word is. But we just got to stick to our basics. Go back to, you know, being hard to beat, you know, starting on Saturday. Um, been leading in both these last two games. That's the, the bad thing about it. Been leading and could have picked up more points and thrown it away. So we've got to address that. Um, I'm sure we will do. Um, but it's just a temporary thing, you know. It's going to happen sometime in the stage and I'd rather it happen now than come to the end of the season. Congratulations again to Didzi. Well, Derby could do with a goal or two from him today as they try to get the better of Oxford United and maintain their spot in the League One playoff places. Results on Tuesday have seen Derby slip to sixth, just four points above Wickham now, who also have a game in hand on the Rams. If you're the optimistic sort, the gap between Derby and the top two now stands at 13 points. Sheffield Wednesday have a better goal difference than Plymouth and they have games in hand. Derby looking over their shoulder just a little bit and so too are Oxford United. They go into the weekend six points clear of the relegation zone and the two teams between them and the bottom four both have games in hand. Their goal difference is much better though than any of the sides around them. 
and Oxford are hoping that a change in manager will get them out of trouble. They sacked former boss Carl Robinson last month and have now settled on his replacement. They've gone for the man who almost led MK Dons to promotion last season. Liam Manning's side lost to Wickham in the playoff semi-finals after finishing third, but he was sacked earlier this season with the team second from bottom. Robinson was relieved of his duties after an eight-game winless run that saw Oxford pick up just one point from a possible 24 and slip dangerously close to the bottom four. Remember last season, they only just missed out on a playoff place and did finish in the top six in the two previous years. So, a new era about to get underway at the Kazam Stadium, but it'll still be former Derby defender and coach Craig Short who takes charge of Oxford against the Rams today. I'm not sure you ever expected to be leading Oxford United out against Derby County. No. Just took a bit of time at Derby, first of all. Which club that has close to Which time? Are three, well, three, 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 yeah, go on then. Talk through the three times you were at Derby County. As a player, I've been going back 92 to 95, wow. so I went for a record. Transfer fee at the time, which was vastly overpriced, vastly overpriced, had a terrible first year. <laughs> but then, he, did, go on, go on. Did you have a terrible first year because you were thinking about yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, it weighed me down. So I didn't do great, but eventually I, got, I managed to be captain and managed to get a move to Everton. Then after that, so yeah, but it was the three years I enjoyed. It was a good club, and they gave me employment after my playing career finished. You know, with Nigel Clough took me as the 16s manager. And Darren Russell kindly gave me an under 23s job when I when we when I let, finished at Blackman as a as a, as a coach at Blackman. So it's still it's been good to me. It's been good still to people me. behind the scenes there that you you know. Oh yes, yeah, a lot of them. Yeah, um, uh, it's uh, the Cadbury manager still there. A friend of mine we room together as players. Um, a lot of the stuff I know. It's uh, I know they've had a difficult period over the last couple of years, but wonderful facilities. We've lost Mark Thomas from here to go there. Yeah. I know Mark's enjoying it, so I went to watch them against. Plymouth on Tuesday night and the travelling support was incredible so there'll be a lot down here on, uh, on Saturday. Uh, there should be a big crowd for us as well. First home game since there, since you uh, stepped in. A, a, a week of reflection after Lincoln. We were better, you said it at the time, we were better. Yeah, we had to focus. <laughs> yeah, we had to be. <laughs> our, last, you know, our last away games, we were just the lads didn't turn up. Um, and they'll, they'll admit that. Um, Cambridge and uh, Burton was a, a real disappointing days. MK first half, responded well second half. So we had to be, I knew Lincoln would let us have the ball even though you know, they were unbeaten at home. They're, they're that sort of team that sets up that way. Um, we just couldn't convert any of our opportunities you know, into, into goals. And that's, you know, I didn't really care about our performance that day. I wanted to win. You just swapped it because you swapped the performance for a win. And we could do that the same this weekend. Craig Short there, the man taking charge of Oxford against the Rams today. Let's hear from the Derby boss now. Paul Warren was named Manager of the Month for January and his star striker has been named Player of the Month for February this week. Here's the boss on David McGoldrick. Uh, yeah, brilliant for Didsy. Had a great month. In fairness, I think he's had better months. And that sounds a bit crazy, but I know how these things work. It's just like on the highlights. So he scored a lot of goals this month, but... I think he's had better performing months, but really pleased for him. Brilliant lad. I'm saying things that everyone already knows, I know, but he's brilliant with the younger pros on and off the pitch. I always see him talking to people and trying to help them. And he's a really good example of, you know, what you can do if you make the best of yourself. And he's definitely done that, scoring goals for fun, leading the line really well. And uh, I think he's a real threat uh, for us in this league. And I know because I speak to the opposition managers all the time. Uh, they're buzzing if I ever take him off, so uh, I know how important he is. It's been another busy week for you, um, three-game week. I know you were disappointed, obviously, on, on Tuesday night. and You talked after the game about wanting to see a reaction. I know ultimately you'll see that reaction on Saturday, but are you seeing it already over the last couple of days here, here at Moor Farm? I mean, I, I don't know if I hid my emotions well enough. If you, if you saw that I was upset, then that's quite impressive. Um, I was a bit angry, obviously. Um, I'm just angry at the fact that I don't know, I sound like a parent here, more disappointed, that's the truth. So in the in the Shrews game, I thought we were unbelievable first half and, you know, we warned the team at half time, every game of halves are different and, you know, we had a 15 minute spell where we conceded, unfortunately, and we ended up throwing away two points. That was bitter to, for me to swallow because our first half performance deserved to beat anyone. And then to follow that up against Plymouth, who... I've said this about a load of teams that I got wrong, but uh, Plymouth arguably got the best home record and we absolutely smoked them first half and for the same thing to happen uh, was 
beyond frustrating. And like I say all the time, it's like everything matters. Games turn on a heartbeat. And if you miss one tackle in the middle of the pitch, one throw in, one set piece, boom. And that is, and the concentration levels have to be from zero to 95 minutes. And unfortunately, in the last couple of games, I think collectively we've let ourselves down. And there's my frustration. So look, I can't guarantee anything Saturday. Um, I just hope that those little parts of our play, if they do come in and everyone makes mistakes, I understand that, um, we don't get punished so clinically as we have been. I want to ask about Oxford and, and the situation that they're in at the moment. Don't have a manager, although an appointment may be close as we speak right now. It it hasn't happened. Does facing a side that's between managers face a particular challenge for you? Yeah, yes and no. But I mean, more for the players. I think, um, I, I mean, and we can't mention who we think it is, but I think the person you think it is, this is the one person I think it is, and I think it's happened. So whether he takes the team tomorrow or not, he'll sit in the stands. What I do know, because we asked the players today and they agreed with, and I was like, well, is that when a new manager comes in, you get an extra 20% because the ones on the periphery, it's just the, it's just the craziest thing. People who aren't footballers would go, well, well then they, then they always try. Yeah, they always try, but sometimes you need that extra element. I can always go running, but I try a little bit harder if there's a lion chasing me. It's the same principle, really. So when a new manager comes in, there's this new sort of, oh my God, the ones who thought they were safe and were playing every week, all of a sudden think, wow, if my level isn't, I won't be playing every week, although the previous management coaching staff loved me, the next one might not. And then the ones that come on a sub think, well, this is my chance. So there, there is a reset button with that. There is, without a doubt. The other thing that a new manager brings is it gives the, um, no, unless it was me coming in, obviously, but um, it gives the stadium a right boost, as in, if they, they, get, they feel like they get to an end of an era with a manager, rightly or wrongly, once the fans feel it and it's in the building, you can feel it, you can sense it, you know, the lads have played really well and they lose in the last minute and they get booed off, you know, that sort of thing. Like it, when, when, Once it's felt like that and the players feel that, once the manager does leave and a new one comes in, everyone's got their enthusiasm back. Everyone's going to the club shop again. Everyone's putting their lucky pants back on, whatever the case may be. But everything resets. And that is the problem you have when you play a new manager. Not only tactically they might change it, and like, that's fine, obviously, I can't stop them. But, um, so you're not 100% sure how they're going to play. But what you are sure of is the crowd are up for it more and the players are just a little bit more incentivized. is probably the best way to put it. And that is the problem. Um, start on a, a positive, hopefully finish on one as well. We, yes. saw, we saw the pictures of Max Bird rejoining the group. How's he doing? Is he in contention? Yeah, good. We're good here at Keeping Secrets, aren't we? We like to film everything and let everybody know everything, which is what I find uh, amazing, which is really positive. So that's good. Yeah, we kept that under wraps really well. Uh, so yeah, he's back in training. In fairness, um, uh, and I always compliment the staff, and I'm not trying to be disingenuous about it, that they're excellent. The, the, the fitness, physio, all that department is something else. So Bodie's come back ahead of steam, really, but in phenomenal shape. So really pleased with him and you know the physios wouldn't like me to say it but if I wanted to start him tomorrow I could there he is Derby boss Paul Warren 12 matches scheduled for League One today but you never know with the weather the top two are both on the road Sheffield Wednesday at Portsmouth and Plymouth at Barnsley that's second against fourth there's Bolton against Ipswich as well that's fifth against third while Wickham are away at Burton Albion and at the Kassam Stadium, it's Oxford United against Derby County. It's a game overseas viewers can watch on Rams TV. Get your game pass now at dcfc.co.uk. Michael Weedock and Sean Barker will be with you for Match Day Live from 2.30. Goodbye.